Hi, this is Nancy Boswell, and you are listening to the Listen and Repeat podcast, episode 89. This is the first episode for the short story, To Build a Fire. This is written by Jack London, an American novelist, uh, perhaps the most famous American novelist at that time. He was born in 1876, died uh, at only age 40 in 1916. Now, I finished last week the the short story, um, uh, Gift of the Magi. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. Gift of the Magi. That took six weeks. I wanted to do another short story, so I started looking around. My first idea was to do a Sherlock Holmes short story, but they were they're really quite long, and uh, lots of difficult language. Um, so I decided not to do Sherlock Holmes because it's mainly because they're so long. And I kept looking. I went and I found a website that talked about the the greatest short stories, and it it mentioned this one. And I looked at it, and it's 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 longer than Gift of the Magi, but it's shorter than some other things I was looking at. And I like the language. That is, there there are plenty of words that are difficult, but there's not a huge amount of difficult words. And his writing style reminds me of Hemingway, meaning not as many really, really long sentences. Though I just noticed the first sentence in this is pretty long, but uh, a lot of the sentences are short. (laughs) <laughs> like Hemingway. I can't use Hemingway, or as far as I know, I can't use Hemingway for this because it's still in the public domain. I said that wrong. It's not in the public domain yet. It's still under copyright, and I don't think it's legal for me to to use that without permission to Hemingway or anything else that, that is still under copyright. That's why I always use old, you know, very old... Um, pieces of writing when I when I do this. So this is To Build a Fire by Jack London. Uh, I should also say another reason I cho- chose this is because where I am, it's winter. I'm in China. Now I'm in southern China, so it's not too cold. Um, northern China is, is very, very cold, of course. But where I am, it's winter time, and I thought, well, this is appropriate, right? This is appropriate because uh, it's winter time where I am and where some of you are, and this is about cold weather, <laughs> okay? Now, I know some of you are not in areas that have a cold winter, or you're south of the equator, and it's summertime for you. So uh, it, that may not, this may not have any meaning to you, but I know some of you are in places where it's cold or maybe you even have snow and ice. Hmm. Uh, I don't get snow and ice where I live because it's, you know, we're too far south. Uh, I'm in southern China, not too far from Vietnam. But uh, my, my home state, Arkansas, got some snow last week which is, it's uncommon. They get snow about once or twice a year, maybe about two or three times a year. Though I talked to my mother, and she said she didn't get any snow. So she's in North Arkansas, and they didn't have any snow. But Central Arkansas, Little Rock, where my friends live, uh, had snow. Uh, If you follow me, if you've heard many of my my podcasts, you'll be interested to know my mother was uh, watching TV and was holding her new kitten. <laughs> she just really loves her, her newest little cat. So now let's start, <laughs> let's start to build a fire by Jack London. So I will speak and you repeat after me. Okay, try to follow or try to copy how my voice goes up and down. That's called intonation. That will help you sound more natural, and it will make it easier for us to understand you. So listen and repeat. Copy how my voice goes up and down and copy my pronunciation. Day had broken cold and gray. Exceedingly cold and gray. When the man turned aside from the main Yukon Trail.
and climbed the high earth bank. where a dim and little-traveled trail led eastward. Through the fat spruce timberland. It was a steep bank. And he paused for breath at the top. excusing the act to himself by looking at his watch. It was nine o'clock. There was no sun nor hint of sun. Though there was not a cloud in the sky, It was a clear day, and yet there seemed an intangible pall over the face of things. Intangible. And I'm sorry, I've never pronounced the word pall before. I, I should have looked it up. I don't know if it's pal or pall. It's something I've read, but I've never, I've never said it because it's, it's very uncommon. I, I apologize for that. I think it's Paul. A subtle gloom that made the day dark. Subtle. The B is silent. And that was due to the absence of sun. This fact did not worry the man. He was used to the lack of sun. It had been days since he had seen the sun. And he knew that a few more days must pass. Before that cheerful orb due south. Orb is a very old word for a circle or ball. Would just peep above the skyline and dip immediately from view. The man flung a look back along the way he had come. The Yukon lay a mile wide and hidden under three feet of ice. The Yukon River. Yukon is also a, a province in Canada. On top of this ice were as many feet of snow. It was all pure white. rolling in gentle undulations where the ice jams of the freeze-up had formed. Undulation is very uncommon. I've read it, but I've, I've, I've never said it. <laughs> North and south, as far as his eye could see, It was unbroken white. Save for a dark hairline that curved and twisted. From around the spruce covered island to the south. and that curved and twisted away into the north. 
where it disappeared behind another spruce-covered island. This dark hairline was the trail, the main trail. that led south 500 miles to the Chilkoot Pass, Dia, and Saltwater. And that led north 70 miles to Dawson. I've actually heard of Dawson. It's a, it's a city or a big town in uh, the Yukon, I think it's called the Yukon Territory. Uh, of northern Alaska, north northwest Alaska. I, I said Alaska, I'm sorry, Canada, northwest Canada, uh, close to Alaska, next to Alaska. Uh, the others I, I ha haven't heard of. And still on to the north, a thousand miles to Nulato. And finally to St. Michael on Bering Sea. Here, S-T is Saint, S-A-I-N-T, Saint Michael. A thousand miles and half a thousand more. But all this, the mysterious far-reaching hairline trail, the absence of sun from the sky, the tremendous cold, and the strangeness and weirdness of it all made no impression on the man. It was not because he was long used to it. He was a newcomer in the land. And here's a word that I don't know. It might be from one of the native languages, uh, Chechaqua. It looks a little like Spanish, but it's not Spanish because I know Spanish. Probably from one of the, the native languages of what we used to call Eskimos, but uh, um, the Native Americans up there. And this was his first winter. The trouble with him was that he was without imagination. He was quick and alert in the things of life. But only in the things and not in the significances. Fifty degrees below zero meant eighty degrees, I'm sorry, meant eighty odd degrees of frost. Such fact impressed him as being cold and uncomfortable, and that was all. It did not lead him to meditate upon his frailty, frailty. <laughs> we don't pronounce that word very often, frailty. His frailty as a creature of temperature. And upon man's frailty in general. able only to live within certain narrow limits of heat and cold. And from there on, it did not lead him to the conjectural field of immortality and man's place in the universe. Fifty degrees below zero stood for a bite of frost.
that hurt and that must be guarded against by the use of mittens, ear flaps, warm moccasins, and thick socks. Moccasins are a, uh, it's actually an Indian word, a Native American word for a, uh, a leather shoe, a native leather shoe. 50 degrees below zero, was to him just precisely 50 degrees below zero. That there should be anything more to it than that was a thought that never entered his head. And that's all for today. Uh, so this is like the introduction and, you know, the first page of uh, To Build a Fire. And I don't know if you're cold, but I'm, I'm getting cold just reading about all this cold weather. 50 degrees below zero. My goodness. Cold, cold, cold. <laughs> now, uh, in the podcast next week, we will, we will meet the dog. Uh, Jack London's most famous book uh, is called The Call of the Wild, and it's, it's all about a dog. So it's no surprise that in this famous short story of Jack London's, there's also a dog in, in the very cold weather in the north. That's uh, very similar to, to his book, The Call of the Wild. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you found this useful. And I hope you have a good day.